I'm Sir Tap Tap, and let's play Future Item EP Deluxe. A review copy of the game and the soundtrack were provided by the developer, free of charge. This is by Mixed Bag, an Italian indie studio, powered by Unity. It is related to the Iridium game, which is like a side-scrolling shooter, but the gimmick was you could you know, press a button, and then you would fly back the other direction. And I messed up a half hour long recording of this just now, so we're gonna take a shorter route and we're just gonna jump right into here to level 21. Because why not? So we're gonna see relatively hard levels in comparison to what you would normally start with, but whatever. I shouldn't die too much. I hope. I have a bunch of credits in case I do die, so whatever. The way this game works is... It's described often as being a mix of Star Fox and a Star Wars, like, Death Star trench run. Go away, blue bubble. Or purple bubble. I have issues with colors, okay? Stop! Ah, okay, I was pressing multiple buttons. Ah. So yeah, you have pretty limited movement compared to, say, Star Fox. It's not quite a rail shooter either, because, you know, you can flip around. That annoying sound is telling me I have limited time left. So yeah, the game basically centers around you going around these, like, ship things and blowing up all the cyan, neon cube things. And once you blow up all of those, there's a big white cube that you need to blow up. I missed some of the, the cyan cubes because I'm stupid. Let's see, let's go back. Two things to note. Music in this game is great. And there's a fair amount of it. And I really love the visual style of this game. I know it's not going to be everyone's thing because it's fairly minimalist. But it works really well, and I love the like glitch chic sort of thing where they, you know, the weird chromatic aberrations at the side, the glowy like effect at the top there. Like you see that blue thing spinning around up there? It's like a reflection of what's like normal parts of the level. I really enjoy it. I'm sure it's not everyone's thing. One thing I will note: I was initially very concerned that the game was going to be super nauseating to play because of that stuff. It's really not. Though one thing you can do, you can change your viewing angle. So like, first person mode is maximum nausea. Though I actually think it's pretty cool, but it's not practical for me to play that way because I need to see a bit more. And then there's a few levels of far away. So you can play at maximum distance if you get trouble because of the effects there. I played this level terribly, by the way. Some of the levels you have to sort of easter egg hunt to find some of the blue things. All of the gameplay comes from destroying all the blue blocks, you know, they have to change it up. Including going inside. This game has a free version on PC, but it is not feature complete compared to this version. This is like... ow. This is the console remix where they add some new features like... There's a mode where you can continue... You know, the last 10 level, every 10 levels you get a checkpoint that you can restart at any time, basically. That's why I'm starting at level 21 instead of level 1. So the PC version, a bit more bare bones, but I mean, it's free. So if you want to check out this game, I guess there's not really any reason not to check out the free PC version. I believe it's also on Mac, which is kind of surprising. There's also a $2 iOS version, which... Not sure how well that works out, to be quite frank, but uh, try that if you want. This is the PS4 version, obviously. It is, of the versions I have played, it is my favorite. It is also on, it's cross by with Vita. It's like 12 or $13, some weird amount matched to the EU price, I'm sure. The way it controls is not quite Star Fox. You have pretty tight movement and pretty... You feel a bit limited in your 
non um, Z axis movement, which can make fetching certain cubes like this array of cubes here, it can be kind of difficult to mow them all down in one go. That's just sort of where the difficulty comes from, I guess. And it can also be sort of annoying to move left and right in a limited space because you have to do that switch around a lot. So the movement can be a little off-footing, but you get used to it. It's one thing I would compare this game to be, it's sort of a score run, arcadey sort of affair, sort of like Velocity 2X, but unlike Velocity 2X, it is not nearly as accessible. Like 2X, you could pretty much really suck at the game, but if you want to play anyway, the time limits are all very lenient, and you could just get an absolutely terrible score, and the game would let you continue on. And of course, to actually get good scores and gold medals and all of the perfects and all of that stuff, you have to actually be good. And so the skill up, the skill ceiling is actually very high. This game, the skill floor is also fairly high, so it's not as accessible. And you know, not all games need to be accessible, but I think it is nice when a game, you know, damn it, is playable for people that kind of suck, but also, you know, has that good challenge for people that don't suck. Oh, right, this level. So yeah, this game has, compared to the free version, it's got more enemies, more music, more levels, more content in general. So don't think you're getting the full experience by getting the free PC version. Quell surprise. But you should get you can get a taste of it at least, I'm sure. I didn't play much of the free PC version. One thing, you will have to use Deshura to get the free PC The free PC version is on Deshura, unfortunately. I know lots of people hate it. But I mean hard to beat free. Also, it's cross by. I forget if I mentioned that, but yeah, it's cross by PS3 or PS4 and PS Vita. It is not on PS3. That little portal I, that made these blinky ones appear, you do not have to get these to beat the level, they're just sort of extra score. I was very frustrated on a certain level because I thought you had to beat those to get those to beat the level, and they disappeared, and you don't get the portal back, but it turns out they're just bonus points. Okay, what cubes am I missing? Oh right, there's some at the front of the ship. Yeah, I really like grazing through some of the like, you know, playing it more like a trench run sort of thing. There's some pretty close shaves, depending on how you play it. It can be pretty intense. I, you're probably gonna do a lot, not as well. Oh right, nega radar, or nega cube radar. Nega cubes are like an extra bonus thing. You get a trophy if you get all of them. I hate this level, by the way. So there was one... One of the biggest problems I have with gameplay in this game is that checkpoints are very forgiving in certain levels and very, very unforgiving in other levels. <coughs> so what we have here is a very long level, like, just depth-wise. And if you die at one end of the level, like at the far end of the level, you get kicked all the way back to the start. And you do not have an easy way to get all the way back. In addition, this level has those mine things that like scream at you for some reason. I'm not sure why, but they scream. And so it's fairly easy to die in this level compared to certain other long levels. So it can be very annoying if you die. So obviously solved by just not dying. As you've already seen, easier said than done. So that's sort of a problem in that it makes difficulty very erratic because on a majority of levels dying, the main problem is that you lose half your energy. But in this level, like getting back to where you were takes so much longer and wastes so much more energy than it would in a shorter level. And in a way, you could see that as a form of difficulty. It's, you know, it's okay that, you know, difficulty ramps up as you go on. But, the length of levels does not increase in a linear fashion, necessarily. Not the, you know, actual Z-depth length of levels. So it results in rather inconsistent difficulty only when you die. 
So like, some of these levels could benefit from like checkpoints halfway through or something. And also another weird thing, in some of these levels, the core does not appear at the end of the level. Like sometimes there's not always an explicit end of the level anyway. But sometimes you have to go hide hunting to go actually find where the exit of the level is. So your first playthrough, you might die just because of running out of time on that. Basically, well, it's a very arcadey game to its core. So your first playthrough of the game, it's really not going to hold your hand too much. And you're not going to get very far. And you're just going to have to play the game more and get good, generally speaking. Though, one nice feature of the console version here is, if you saw there, as you collect cubes, you unlock more credits. So I have like nine credits, which is really plenty. You start off with like two, which is plenty if you're very good at the game. It is not plenty for a very beginner. Also, the game has a clean 60 frames per second, but there's this weird stutter effect with my bullets that really does not affect gameplay, but it bothers my brain. Just a random nitpick. Oh, there's some other features that I can't really show on this level. But I like this level, it's sort of a change of pace. It's like a Easter egg hunt, and I don't particularly mind that. Though if you die in this level, you are so freaking screwed. Dying cuts your energy in half, which... If you die too early on, you can really hilariously harm your ability to actually complete a level without needing a credit. Whoa. Okay, okay, okay. If you get in a cramped space like that, it can be very hard to get out because you have to constantly switch. And that's just sort of, you have to keep that in mind and not do that. The game does not move like Star Fox. Like in Star Fox, you have much more freedom of movement. So you have to be very aware of how you move in this game. I think that's the last one. Yep. And obviously, I knew the path I need to take in that level. For some levels, you can just do it based on instinct. Some of them, not as much. This level is just kind of hell. Ah, not least because of that. Speed boosts are kind of annoying, honestly. But another feature is you unlock these skins, which let you change the uh, visuals of the levels. Not all visuals change, but like... The majority of colors change. I really like this one, though it has a problem that another, like the EGA or CGA one has. Oh crap, I'm pressing... got me killed. Let me see. CGA time. Dang it. There's so many of them now. Yeah, the problem with this one is that the ship color... Holy crap, I'm so doomed. But yeah, the ship color is way too close to the block color. But whatever, you don't have to use that skin or anything. But those are a nice touch. You unlock skins the same way you unlock more credits. You also unlock certain features. I am really bad at dodging missiles, which is why I died there. I really hope that low time sound effect isn't too loud. But yeah, I have plenty of credits now. This mission gave me a lot of trouble the first time, but I have Tons more credits this time, so I'll be fine. One thing about this game, destroying enemies, easier said than done. A lot of enemies take a ton of hits, and it's just not really worth trying to take them down. Like those missile things, very hard to take them down in a single firing run. And it's really not worth it to try twice. Also, cool thing, you can go straight through them, which is nice. See, I was trying to destroy it. It's not a good idea, honestly. Alright. I think we just have one more section of these. And one thing about this game, it includes the classic version of, um, of Futuridium as an unlockable. I've, I've gotten most of the unlockables now, and I honestly forget how you unlock that one. I'm sorry. But uh, the original version, you don't have turbo. 
and the levels are a little different than this mode. This mode is a remix of the original, and it is my favorite version of the game, honestly, because of partly because of the uh, well, you unlock credits for all modes, but it lets you start over. Where is the clock? I am missing. This is one occasionally frustrating aspect of the game, is when you miss one block. Wait, did I get these in the front? What? What am I missing? I don't understand. This does not usually happen. This is... me being dumb. Yeah, there's no radar to let you identify that one thing you missed. Oh, did I forget to go under? Ah, I did. I'm stupid. I know the layout of most of these, but... Yeah, sometimes there's stuff under the ships, sometimes there's not. It's usually safe to just take a peek under the ship the first time you play. Actually, there was stuff under all the ships, so that's, that's just me being dumb. Visuals-wise, I really love the art style of this game. I'm sure it's gonna be... You know, not everybody likes it. One thing... I'm pretty sure the PS4 should be able to do some extra anti-aliasing. It's not super extreme aliasing. Ah, oh, that was terrible. But um, you can definitely tell on the trails that you leave. That makes the aliasing very visible. So personally, I would... The game has such a clean art style, and I could really do with some clean visuals to go with that. I mean, it's not terrible. Ah, it's not like it's no AA at all, at all I don't think but uh, it could definitely be better. Can't believe I'm gonna die on this stage. There's a boss, not very traditional bosses, but there's a boss at the end of every 10 levels. I was gonna die anyway. No! Ah, oh, that is one thing I was going to bring up to complain about. When the continue thing comes up, it's the default selection is no. That is a very unfortunate position. I really have no idea why that is the case. Like, if you accidentally continue, it's very easy to quit. If you accidentally don't continue, you're screwed. And that's... Uh, whatever. You can just jump right into zone 4, though. That was a very convenient time to die. Or actually, I'm gonna show some other modes of the game. Oh, one other thing. Uh, Velocity 2X has this quick restart where you, like, hold L1 and R1. And that either... I think that brings up a prompt where you can just press X at that point to restart. In this game, to quick restart, you have to navigate all the way down to quick restart. <coughs> navigate to yes. It's not quite instant either, but that's the least of its problems. But, um, yeah, I would appreciate a better quick restart for a game like this, because, like, if you're hunting for medals or score or whatever, like, you can go and try to get these medals, like, never dying, and it would really help if the quick restart was a bit better. Generally speaking, Velocity 2X is like the gold standard of arcadey single level speed run sort of stuff. Like they tick all the boxes. They have every possible quick restart uh, feature you could want for a game that you want to speed run and not deal with unnecessary UI fluff. Also, a cool feature of this game, in addition to having great music, you can change the music at any time. Like just the D-pad changes music. So that's pretty cool. Less cool, the you, since you use the analog stick on the menu, uh, it's actually not quite as responsive as it should be. It feels really weird. I talked to the developer about this and they're, uh, they realized it's a problem. They haven't patched it yet, but hopefully that'll get fixed at some point. It feels a little weird. It's perfectly fine in gameplay. It's only at the menu that it's weird, but it's still kind of unfortunate. So one of the major additions to this game is the whole unlock system where you you know you can get more credits and crap and through that you unlock lots of extra stuff as well you unlock this is a demo version of the game apparently and it actually has different content than the original game like this is just normal level one but as we go on we'll see some remixes of levels that are in deluxe version of the game that are not like they're designed a little differently and that's pretty nice the classic versions of the levels are also a little different, so it's sort of like New Game Plus in that it's not like completely, or it's actually more like Second Quest. 
they're the same levels remixed, but it's different enough to be, you know, a bit refreshing of a different challenge here. There's also the rings mechanic, which is only used in bonus levels in the deluxe version. They just sort of want to, to cram all of their different gameplay gimmicks into this demo version. I'm not sure where the demo version is actually used. I don't think it has a demo on PlayStation Store. I could be wrong, but I don't think it does. So I'm not really sure what the demo run is actually from. But there's also the classic mode that you can play. So like these purple blocks you don't see until way late in the deluxe version, but they're right here very early on in the demo run. It also tracks high scores for the demo run. One thing I was- I forgot to mention this earlier. I was initially very worried about the chromatic aberration weird glitchy effects. Uh, I actually, at least on PS4, I don't find them distracting really at all. <laughs> I think it's more noticeable when you're not playing than when you are playing, because you just sort of get tunnel vision when you're playing. Um, it's more pronounced on Vita if it matters to you, but if you just sort of zoom the camera out, it's really not a big deal. Also, you can do first-person mode if you want. I personally prefer it zoomed out a bit, because I can sort of see more of what's going on. It's especially useful when I'm going to turn around. Uh, so, there's quite a bit of unlocks in this game, and you unlock stuff just by blowing up cubes. It's not entirely skill-based and, you know, unlocking stuff. So if you kind of suck, you can just sort of suck your way through and get a whole bunch of credits just by blowing up the cubes. And I have nine now, and I'm about to unlock, you know, ten. That is plenty to, you know, struggle your way through the main mode of the game. The game isn't super forgiving, especially at the beginning. But, you know, like I said, it's not as accessible as uh, Velocity 2X. So it's a lot more arcadey in its mindset. But it's definitely pretty tight arcadey action. And overall I do like it. It's there's some frustrations. I love that the, the little blue trails stay around. They sort of make the aliasing more obvious, but it's pretty cool. It's sort of like the Super Meat Boy effect. Hopefully you won't die too much to see them, but you also see on your, you know, reverse runs, you can see, oh, I was here. So that's pretty cool. I said before, but I really do love the skin change and the instant skin change. That's really cool. Alright, let's take a look at some of the other content we got. It's basically more of the same game stuff. I mean, that is the main game. Um, there's also these Nega Cubes that are like bonus things that are pretty hard to find. But I recently unlocked this Nega Radar that lets you find, helps you find them somehow. But all they're good for is you get all of them and you get a trophy. I'm not sure if there's anything else to it than that. There's also Flappy Iridium. They made this for the Flappy Jam. And it actually controls much more like Helicopter than Flappy Bird. Like, you have a... You, know, you can hold the button to go more up, and Flappy Bird is just sort of tap to go up a set amount. But it's just a cute little bonus. It's got some frames per second issues, but I mean, it's obviously not the main event. It's just a stupid unlockable that you get, so don't... This is not, you know, a significant portion of the content, so don't really worry about it. I think that's... Oh, right! There's a actual... No, not that. There is an actual story to this game, which I did not realize for quite some time. The intro is just crammed down there in the extra section. Yeah, there's sort of a story, anyone. Anyway, it doesn't really matter, but whatever. Yeah, I think this game's pretty neat. Definitely not for everyone. It's got its issues, but uh, once you get past it, it's pretty neat. And I really love the visual style, love the music. You can get the music, um, it's five bucks for, it's an album of 17 tracks. You can only download it to Vita though. And once it's on your Vita, it creates MP3 files you can copy to your PC. But I guess it's just due to how PlayStation does the music stuff. <coughs> it's kind of unfortunate, but I don't think the dev can do anything about that. 
So I'll give you links to the main game, which is cross by PS4, PS Vita. It's like 12 or 13 bucks, I think. Um, album is five bucks. The iOS version is like two bucks, but it's not the same, obviously. There's also the PC version, also not the same, and that's free, so you may as well try that out. So yeah, that is Futuridium EP Deluxe. Also, you can invert your Y axis if you want. That should be fairly expected, but yeah. Cute little game. Oh, I forget if I mentioned, Mixed Bag is an Italian indie, indie studio. They don't really see that too, much, too often, so I thought that was interesting enough to know. Uh, one little added note, the game has cross-buy for PS Vita, but there's no cross-save, so your unlocks don't move over to your PS Vita file, so you basically pick one version to play and that's it. There are separate trophy lists if you're a super trophy hound, but I would prefer, personally prefer to have actual cross-save than, you know, totally restart over and get more trophies.